In the last couple videos, we've been taking a look at different things to do with constraints inside RBD simulations. And in the last video, we took a look at how we can manually make these constraints, but there was one issue with that, and that was the objects would continue to move indefinitely. So let's take a look at how we can go about fixing that. So let's just dive in here. I do have this project available on Patreon. If you wanna dive in and look through all my different settings, it'll be available on there this setup that we're currently going to be going through. So all this different stuff I was covered in the last video. So I'm not going to go over how to reset all this up again. If you want to learn how to do that, just jump on over to that video. Uh, basically all we're doing here is just breaking up our geometry. We're making our geometry or our, our constraints from scratch. And then if I go ahead and press play here, we have just one little issue, which I said in the beginning is that the objects will continue to move around continuously. They will kind of never stop moving. Specifically, if you look at like this piece, it's gonna to continue to rock about forever. It doesn't really slow down, it just keeps going, which is not how you would expect a simulation to work. So we need to kind of tackle that. And if you wanna grab this head model, I didn't mention that, but this head model is available on 3dscans.com. I will leave a link to that website in the description. So we need to take a look at a couple things here. So if I start to scrub through our simulation here and we take a look at this null in the geometry spreadsheet, we have some attributes that are created here that are our velocity attribute, which is that VX, or v, VX VY, and VZ, it's a vector. So it's our velocity vector. And then we have this W vector as well. This W vector is actually the angular velocity. It's how it is represented. So we need to basically bring those both down to zero. So we can do that by jumping into our, our uh, bullet solver here and then dropping down a geometry angle. And we're going to just wire this into our second input of our merge or into the merge, I should say. So drop down a merge, drop down this at or geometry angle, and then we're not going to change the settings here. We're gonna leave it on points and we're also going to not touch this geometry because we don't want it to run over the constraints. We want it to run over the actual geometry. So in here, we need to do a couple of things. First of all, we need to define how much we want to slow down the movement by. So I'm gonna create a couple of floats here. So I'm gonna call them drag. So float drag, and I'm gonna set this equal to something low. These are just some values that I found that worked. You can set that equal to a uh, parameter if you want, and you can adjust it through a slider or whatever if you want. I'm just gonna set this equal to 0.5 for now. And then I'm also going to make a second one. We're gonna call this angular drag because I wanna be able to control the two forces independently of each other. I'm going to set this to something higher because I want the pieces to kind of slow down a little bit faster with the angular rotation rather than the just drag on the velocity. But I don't want to affect everything uniformly from the start. I want to only affect them as they start to rest on the bottom of or on the ground, I should say. So we need to define that. So we're going to use an if statement. So if we're going to check the position, so at p dot y, so the y position, how far it is up off this ground plane. If that is less than one, then I want to start applying these forces. So I want to take our velocity vector, so v at v, and then we're going to multiply the that, which is times equals, so a little shortcut there, so velocity times whatever we have on the other side of this equal sign, and that is going to give us our final value. So velocity times, and then we'll do one minus our drag, because I only want to slow this down by 0.05 every frame. So if I do a one minus, that means we're going to do 95% of the velocity every single frame. So it'll lower it by 0.05% or sorry, 5%, I should say, 0 0.05. So if it was one, it's going to be 0 0.95 and then so on and so forth. So then we wanna do the same thing with our 
angular velocity. So we'll do v at w times equals, and then one minus our angular drag. Now, if I just play this, you should see that we start to have this slowing of our pieces once they get close to the ground. So they still fall apart. The gravity is still affecting them like normal, like you would expect, except for we just have the slowing of the rotations and everything, and the movement just in general once it starts to get close to the ground. So particularly look at this piece, we see that it starts to slow down. It's no longer jittering violently all over the place, which is what we're looking for, and it kind of comes to a rest right there. So it's pretty simple to set up, but it's not something that's necessarily right out there for you to understand if you're just starting out you may have a little bit of confusion of why this continues to happen and how to fix it but this is how you can go about fixing it so super simple doesn't take a whole lot just a little bit of code here it's not uh not too difficult there but hopefully that doesn't confuse you too much if you do have questions you can leave those in the comments and i will get back to you on those the best that i can but I do have a bunch of other videos on my channel if you want to learn more about RBDs. I've got a whole playlist that's dedicated to RBD simulations, so take a look at that if you're interested. I've also got a couple other things that I've got to cover yet with this project file that are in the, the Patreon link. Uh, you can grab the project file. There's a few other things in here that I haven't covered yet, so you can grab those on there if you're interested in that and take a look at those before those videos come out. But anyways, I do cover a bunch of other stuff on Houdini as well, not just RBD simulations. So if you want to learn more about Houdini in general, then you can check out the different videos on my channel. But hopefully you learned something. Thank you guys for watching and have a good day.